In uh, 1976, America was introduced to the Bradford family. For uh, five years, we were glued to the set. We were watching Eight is Enough. Please welcome one of the daughters in the Bradford clan, actress Susan Richardson. Look at you. <laughs> So much love, and I thank you. It's been a long time. When Eight is Enough came to an end, you, like Bernadette, also had kind of a tough time getting parts. In fact, you had to be hospitalized for about a severe depression. We were talking with Dick about his depression, and he said he was at one point almost suicidal. What was that time like for you? Um, well, after Eight is Enough, like I said, it was hard to get work, and the first thing I was offered was a big film in South Korea and involved children's charities. I was very excited about it. I was approached by people from the 8th Army to go over there because I used to do a lot of work with Michael Jackson for children. And when I got there, they were doing sex films. And uh, I witnessed a young girl raped on camera and tiny children beaten. And they had taken a life insurance policy out on my life, and I couldn't get home for six months. But when I did get home, I, had, I was like 80 pounds, extremely ill. And all my friends in Hollywood, except for Dick Van Patten and Lori Walters on the show, I came back... And it was, it was a very uh, controversial thing because it was at the time of the Olympics. No one wanted anything to do with me. And I had no money because mo everything had been sold while I was gone just to get me home. And I went to Dick Van Patten's house, a filthy mess, no hair, uh, just devastated. And he just put in his pocket, gave me 500 bucks, same way as one of the other girls on the show. And that's the kind of people that were on my show. But, what but I found that in Hollywood, the, the friendships are only last as long as your job. Oh, I don't and know. I, well, there's some pretty wonderful people. What, what happened in South Korea, though? Was it the idea to lure you over there? They lured me over there, and they used my passport. Um, they took my passport from me, and they kept bringing in very expensive camera equipment with a lot of money in it. And uh, when I wanted to leave, they said, you have to leave the country with all the camera equipment you brought in. I never took any camera equipment into that country. And just money was being smuggled, and I don't know what else. But it was six, uh, six months of pure hell. And uh, my mom finally had to go to the White House and send an attorney over there, and we still had to run for our lives. It was... That's an amazing story. Has that story been told? Well, I've been on Larry King uh, before, right. but because it involved some government officials, uh, my family and I were, were pretty quiet and told that we should just not mention who we saw and what, we, what happened over there. And you were told keep quiet? Yes. Yeah. I said that our, uh, the people that we are talking to today have had some pretty traumatic things happen in their lives, but... That's but I tell something. you, it taught me a lot. I met some South Koreans who didn't speak a stitch of English. The Christian community over there is absolutely incredible. A lot of Americans were afraid to help me because they're in a foreign country. But these people who spoke no English took me into their villages and, and hid me and, and kept me safe. But it's just all I wanted to do for six months. I, I, I reestablished my relationship with God, and I wanted my family, and I wanted my little girl for a year. She was afraid to let me go to the store. I was only supposed to be gone three weeks, and it was six months. And for a year, it was like, he's coming back, Mommy. He's coming back. And my mother had a nervous breakdown over it, too. And all I wanted to do after that was come home. And that's I'm in Sadburyville in the Amish country. And these people love me for me. They loved me when I was four, and they so, love me now. So the Hollywood scene is not anything that you want to be part of. You live, um, you like live near work. where I live, don't yeah. you? Yeah. In Lancaster, down to down Lancaster, Lancaster, over? Right. That's the way they talk. Not, I wouldn't say that everybody in Hollywood, but it's, um, I thought people loved me because I was charming and cute. The people out there that I met loved me because I had money and because I could get them somewhere in Hollywood. And when I had nothing, it was like all the backs were turned. And it's, it's like that, I think, a lot for a lot of teen stars. Your show is canceled. All of a sudden, you're not invited to parties. You show up at a party, and the paparazzi, who used to get paid $1,000 for a picture of you, now doesn't even want to take a picture of you. Right. And uh, you can't even get on a game show because you don't have a show that you're promoting. You have to promote you know, something. Let's take a look at some film. Um, and if you will explain to us, this is lifestyle now, the right. positive this is where part. I, this is where I grew up, and this is what I want my daughter to grow up. And this is a duck pond where we used to ice skate, and I live in an Amish community. And these people are wonderful and make homemade pumpkins and things, and everything is so quiet. A traffic jam there is two buggies and a car. <laughs> you know, it's much less stressful lifestyle. Beautiful. Thank you yeah. for sharing it. More surprises when we return. Don't go away! <laughs> We're
We're back talking with TV stars from the 70s, Dick Sargent from Bewitch, LaWanda Page from Sanford and Sons, Allison Arngrim from Little House on the Prairie, and Bernadette Stannis from Good Times. By the way, Bernadette has done a poster that is, if you see it in the stores, don't be angry with me for not telling you about it. It's like, wow. Thanks. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And uh, Susan Richardson from Eight is Enough. Susan, when we put uh, word out that we were going to do this show, there was somebody who really wanted very much to see you. So we invited him to stop by and surprise you. Your TV dad, Tom Bradford, Eight is Enough. Oh. Would you all welcome Dick Van Patten. <laughs> Not yet. No, I'm going to. I had no idea you were here I when know. I said that. I've been hiding and everything. Oh, I've been here backstage. I was sweet as you said that. Do you happen to have an extra five hundred dollars? I must add, she paid me back right away. Uh oh. Well, I had that was not a setup. I thought Howard Stern was dropping by. I did not say those things about Dick because I knew he was uh, here. Well, I adore him. We were very good friends. Actually, she was my first friend on Eight Is Enough because when I got the job, they had eight children. Now, I had to memorize all the eight children's names. Oh. Plus, I had to memorize their real names. I was getting all mixed up. Except the one that was easy to remember was Susan because she Susan. played Susan. So it was very easy for me to talk and everything, and she told me all about the Amish country. I remember the mm -hmm. first day that I was in there shooting, because I didn't know much about Amish people, and I was fascinated. And she comes right from that country and everything, and she told me all about it and everything. And uh, uh, we're real Thank good pals. Yeah. Isn't it great? Reunion. Isn't it great? You know, Dick has been uh, on seven television series, so we can just plug him into any show we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but the cast of Eight is Enough was very special, was it not? They really were. Uh, you know, mainly I was a child actor, and I grew up uh, as an actor on a TV series called I Remember Mama, and I was the teenage son on that. So, you do? Oh, now, wait. I, I remember Mama, and they were Scandinavian. Scandinavian. That's right. And what, what uh, uh, era was that? Uh, what was... Would, from, we went on the air in 1949, and we went off the air in 1957. It was on for eight years, and uh, I played the part of Nels. But I, growing up in the TV series, I had a lot in common with Susan and the other kids because they were doing the exact same thing that I had done. They were growing up in a TV series. And Dick was very, I think, important to the success of the show because it's so easy when you're a kid all of a sudden get famous and you just get real cocky and obnoxious. And Dick always took us aside and said, this is here today, could be gone tomorrow. Dick was always so wonderful with his fans, always had that time for anybody, and well, he taught us that. I feel that I learned at an early age, I mean, to enjoy it, because it's not going to last forever, and That's so enjoy it while you're doing right. it, and don't complain, right? Right. <laughs> but it really does. It right <laughs> 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 don't last long enough. Incidentally... That segment with LaWanda, all the segments were wonderful, but that was one of the most touching things I've ever seen on TV. I was watching in the green room. Gee, that was a lovely, lovely segment. Green you did. Yeah. Yeah. She, she doesn't she think of her life know, as a oh, segment. Oh, I Red Fox. I'm sorry, Red Fox. But I couldn't help it. Red Fox had the same birthday as me, December the 9th. We sure had the same was. birthday. That's right, and, December the 9th. And I was with Red about 15 years ago in Vegas when he hit the Kino. He won $50,000. I was right. next to him when he oh, hit it. I remember. <laughs> yeah, sure I did. want you to tell me about the last Eight is Enough reunion show, yes. which was an Eight is Enough wedding. It was an Eight is Enough wedding. It was two years ago, and I haven't seen Susan since then. And uh, the, the whole idea was the, uh, the Bradford family all comes to home from all the different places for, for the oldest boy's wedding you know and uh, they all come back with their husbands and wives and do you remember who played your husband his son <laughs> my son Jimmy Van Patten and when he heard that Susan was on the show Jimmy said I want to come there too and, and, what he, a fuck. Oh, and the guess what thing. guess what somebody's here this no! <laughs> Oh, 
we're going to have to... Uh, <laughs> you played Susan's husband on Eight is Enough, the reunion show, which was 1989. Uh, what was it like to be a newcomer to the cast? I'll tell you, for me, it was a lot of fun because uh, growing up, watching the show, every Wednesday night, I used to love the show. And, uh, and also, my real father being on the show, playing the father of all these kids, I sort of felt as if it was sort of like another family that I had. So being on the show, and I got to know them a little bit. I'd come on the set once in a while. Gosh, so, you look like your dad. Really? Yeah. Well, that's Gosh. Because I read for it to play his son originally for the show, and they, they said, geez, it was a great reading, but we just don't think you look enough like your father. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they're talking about this business, you know. Somehow that yeah. makes some kind of strange sense in show yeah. business. Well, we have other uh, special things that we want to do, so let us take a break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> James is in the Chisholms? Well, no, the Chisholms was a series that I did about, uh, geez, eight years ago. Well, maybe nine years ago now. Played mm -hmm. Robert Preston, sir. Robert Preston was my father. Rosemary Harris was my mother. We were in a, it was a wagon train saga. We went across the country. Originally, it was a, uh, it was a miniseries, an award-winning miniseries. But I've seen you in a movie recently. I was wondering if it was a Chisholms rerun or what? Uh, what a movie recently. I'm, I'm now in the Mel Brooks movie, Life ah, Stinks. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you, because I would have sat around going. <laughs> Hi, I have a question for Susan, Bernadette, and Allison. Being up there and then being down, if your daughter or your children, when you have children, were offered a hit series, would you let them do it? I would. Even though you felt... It's not... I don't feel like I fell. You know, that was something that I did in my life, and I'm moving on, I'm continuing to do. And it depends on how you... Um, you perceive it, it depends on how you train your child to accept it and handle it. It's the parenting, I of think. Course, as I'm saying this, my husband is going to be sitting at home going, oh, really? So, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I find that uh, amongst my friends who've had real problems since leaving a series, a lot of their problems are things that were the matter before they got a show. Being on a series can amplify your problems. It gives you more money to mess up your life with. I wonder. <laughs> I, I wonder. I'd like to add something to your question there. You know, it's not hard to get up there. It's just hard to stay up there. <laughs> See, once you get there, if you can't stay up there and hang on, then you go down. That's the hard part. I wonder if it, it I know this will make it a little serious, but Bernadette has had a, a very dreadful thing happen to her. Yes, um... Okay. In May, of May 29th, my father died. He didn't just die. Um, my brother, Gregory Stanislav, and all my brothers and sisters, there are five of us, are working on, um, we have an organization called Youth United to Save the World. You see, my dad was murdered. He was murdered. Um, we found out that a group of um, young fellas, about maybe 16 to 18, 19, I don't know, hit him from behind, hit him in his head. And someone reported that they saw him go down and they saw him get right back up because my father had a body of a 19-year-old he was 66. My daddy was on it. So he got right up, you know, and he came home. It was a Saturday and that Sunday. Um, he said he had a pain in his eye. And the next thing we knew, we, he was talking to me and said, Daddy, what's, what's wrong? Where's the pain? He said, in the back of my head. And he, he went out in a coma. And he never really came back. That same night, he had to have a major operation. I mean, we're like, what? You know, I just bought, we went out and bought him his sneakers because he was taking his trip to the West Indies with my mom. And, I mean, you know, to go through something like that, you have to realize, you know, the youths of the day have to realize that older people belong to somebody they're not just, they're not just old people that you can hit and get get away with it or hit and disregard them but it's very important that the stannis family is trying to turn that around we're trying to turn that around and to teach young people to respect and to love our older people take care of them because they belong to somebody yeah. sir i'm your uh, That, 
I wanted to ask something about Sally, if it's okay. Uh, one of the reasons I came out is because I, I'm realizing more and more, we all are every day, is the world is too small to hate anybody. That's true. Well, I'm here primarily because I'm a big fan of Dick Sargent and Bewitched. We're trying to get the Nickelodeon Network to put it back on the air. <laughs> and in light of my your... shows. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to get them to do it. Um, in light of your recent coming out, if someone were to offer you a role in a network series as a gay character, do you feel any special responsibility in that? Uh, yeah, I do. I w it would have not to be a, a caricature. Um, I, what I said the other day, I'm probably never going to work again. Somebody said, oh, that's, they're, they're writing gay people on television. I thought, no, I, I can play more than that, I think. <laughs> Isn't that absolutely ironic? Yeah. We'll take a break. When we come back, we're going to meet the young lady. Now, let's see if I can do this. The young lady that Susan was pregnant with on the series, Eight is Enough. In other words, her daughter, stay with us. Okay, let me explain that uh, Jim Van Patten's brother Vincent is the one that plays tennis. And uh, we had some women who were willing to take you to lunch, but you're not, you're not the tennis player. Susan has an 11-year-old daughter who also aspires to be an actress. And, uh, Dick, I think you have a special relationship with her. What is it? Well, I was honored. On Eight is Enough, around the fourth year that we were on, Susan said, I'm going to have a baby, as you know, and I want you to be the godfather. And so that was a great honor, and I, and I got a beautiful godchild, but I haven't seen her in two years. So Susan, very introduce angry. her. What? Susan, introduce her. Yes, Sarah, come on. Hon. You're not going to believe this thing. This is beautiful. Oh, dear. Um, this is just as beautiful as your. Oh, gosh. I can't she, she looks Look just, at those eyes. Like, just exactly <laughs> like Mom. Uh, this is a question yeah. for Dick Sargent. Dick, um, why do you think there's a difference between the acceptance of gays, like here in the New York theatrical community, as compared to L.A.? Here it's really fairly accepted in the theatrical community as far as stage, but not in TV and film. Wouldn't you think that L.A. would be ahead of this well, instead but of behind They're not it. selling canned soup on the stage, you know. Oh, you <laughs> the think whole it's difference the sponsors? Is sponsor level, I think, yeah. Question. Yes. Um, Jim, I saw you running in the New York Marathon. I was just wondering, how'd you do? I, I did pretty good um, for myself. You know, I ran 309, which is which is my personal best. So, so I can't walk. All, but, uh, all these Van Patten's have to do athletics as well as act in show business, right? Sally, I love your show. My question is to Aunt Esther. I think you look great, and on the show you always displayed a big belief in God. Luanda. <laughs> Luanda, on the show. <laughs> On the show, you always display, displayed a big belief in God. Are you that way in real life? Yes, I am. I'm a very religious person. I was raised that way, uh, to be religious, because my whole family was religious, especially my mother. And uh, that's, you know, why I could play the character so well. And Sally, I just want to say this. You've been surprising everybody on this show, and you really surprised me, and I got a surprise for you. Where is it? Hand me that. Hand me that bag, please. I got a surprise for you, girlfriend. <laughs> now, what does it say, Luanda? Take it to the Lord or else. <laughs> Take a break. We'll be right back. We'll start with you. Considering it's not polite to bite the hand that feeds you, I still think of uh, the 70s as the golden age of television, and uh, these are their stars. Thank you all for being with us. Some members of our audience.
audience will receive and a promotional fee has been provided by... Milton Bradley Travel Games make great stocking stuffers. A lot of fun in a little size. The perfect stuff for stockings. Milton Bradley Travel Games. <laughs>